here's a photon gun. It fires a pair of photons every second. The photons move at the speed of light and hit the detectors one second later. The whole thing is attached to a cart, traveling at 80% the speed of light relative to the ground. We're currently watching it from the cart's frame of reference, so from this point of view, the cart is not moving, and the ground is moving to the left. But how would it look like from the ground's frame of reference? According to classical physics, it would look like this. Experiments have shown this is not what's happening. We'll see why shortly. Now let's get back to the cart's frame of reference. We depict the cart using a flat two-dimensional space, and we'll use the third dimension to visualize the passage of time. We'll now record how the cart's state evolves over time, using what's known as a space-time diagram. This diagram shows what was the state of the cart at each point in time. For example, at time t equals 2, it looked like this. At time 2.5, the photons were already fired, and they are now halfway to the detectors. At time 3, they hit the detectors, and so on. These vertical lines in the diagram were traced by the photon gun and the detectors. They are called world lines. Vertical world lines mean that these objects don't move relative to our frame of reference. The photon's world lines are slanted by 45 degrees, indicating they are moving at the speed of light. Now let's draw a space-time diagram for the ground's frame of reference according to classical physics. The cart's world lines are now slanted, since it is moving relative to this frame of reference. In classical physics, velocities simply add up, so this photon is moving at 180% the speed of light and this one at 20% the speed of light. However, experiments have shown that in both frames of reference, the photons are observed to move at the speed of light. We never observe a photon moving in a vacuum slower or faster than light speed, regardless of the frame of reference we choose. So the velocities shown here mismatch experimental evidence, and we need to fix something in classical physics to get the correct predictions. The problem is in the way we transform a space-time diagram from one frame of reference to another. Classical physics uses what's called the Galilean transformation. The theory of relativity uses this transformation instead, called the Lorentz transformation. It has some strange properties. It shrinks moving objects. It slows down moving clocks. It breaks simultaneity. But it gives us what we wanted. It preserves the speed of light. And in fact, it's the only reasonable transformation that has this property, so it must be the correct one. So here's how our scene looks like now from the ground's frame of reference. In summary, an observer on the cart sees the gun firing every second, and the photons hitting the detectors simultaneously. A ground observer sees a narrower cart, the gun firing every 1.7 seconds, and the photons hitting the detectors at different times. How can it be that they are both observing the same thing? To answer that, let's put both frames of reference on the same space-time diagram. Here's the cart's frame of reference, running in slow motion, with its space and time grid lines shown in green. And here's the ground's frame of reference, with its space and time grid lines shown in blue. The blue grid lines are skewed. That's why the ground observer interprets the same diagram in a different way. Of course, from the ground observer's point of view, the blue grid lines are orthogonal. It's the green grid lines that are skewed now. According to the principle of relativity, both are equally correct. <laughs>